Hello friends, I welcome you all to this video. We are with the first chapter of Advanced Digital Signal Processing where the various fundamentals with respect to the continuous time signal, discrete time signal and digital signal we are working with with the help of demonstrations into the MATLAB environment. So let us start with this video for the topic to have the Fourier coefficients along with its magnitude and phase spectrum corresponding to the given signal. So let us begin with. So here we start with our topic Fourier coefficients having the MATLAB programming we are dealing with along with the magnitude and phase spectrum. So let us have the objective here. The objective can be here the MATLAB program to find out the Fourier coefficients of the discrete time signal. So for example, the discrete time signal, we keep it to be x of n represented having 1 comma 2 comma minus 1 and we have to sketch its magnitude and phase spectrum in the MATLAB environment here. So let us switch to the MATLAB environment. So in the MATLAB environment, we shall be requiring a new script here. So this is the new script here we take. We write close all clear and CLC so that the execution of this program will start with a new one here and here we mention the first comment what is the purpose of having this particular program so this is the program for finding out four year coefficients and sketching its magnitude and phase spectrum. Now we have been provided a discrete time sequence here. The discrete time sequence can be visualized as x of n. The three coefficients are there. The members, elements you can say 1 comma 2 comma minus 1. So now we can begin with capital N to be the variable the total number of elements we assign it to that is 3 here. Next to that we also generate another variable small i which is having the square root of the value minus 1. As we know the imaginary variable in representation of the Fourier domain either you go for i or j it is under root of minus 1 so under root a square root so MATLAB syntax sqrt we have utilized for the same now along with this we also take the helps of certain intermediate variables small x0 that holds the value 1 small x1 here that holds the value 2 here and small x2 here that holds the value minus 1. So these are the elements of the given discrete time sequence for which we have to find out the Fourier coefficients and further plot the magnitude and phase spectrum here. So now initially the Fourier coefficients we will like to hold with the variable ck it will be simply an array and initially as we have not found it we keep that array to be null here. So now we can make the use of for loop. So in the for loop we take a variable small k and we execute this for loop starting at 0 with the interval 1 up to 11 times and here we mention small c is equal to within the bracket we provide inverse of capital N the number of elements and this is in multiplication to another bracket where we hold x0 the element of the discrete time sequence added to another bracket where we have the second element x1 and it is having again the multiplication operation with the exponential of within the parenthesis we write minus i asterisk 2 multiplication with the pi multiplication with k 
divided by capital N here. Now, afterwards we add it with the another operation where we have the next element that is x2, the last one here, that is having the multiplication with the bracket where again the exponential function here we have where we put minus i in multiplication to the 4 in multiplication to pi here in multiplication to k divided by capital N here getting this closed here and we are ending the syntax with semicolon here now we can write ck so coefficients where we need to take so this is equal to we write ck comma c here so this c should be capital here and now we can end this for loop here so small k can be here from 0 to 11 here and ck can be equal to or we can directly want to print it onto the command prompt so that the Fourier coefficients should be visible. So next to that we can write the magnitude of the Fourier coefficients we need to plot here. So first of all the absolute value is to be determined then the phase spectrum we want so I write phase underscore of CK so this is also we take in terms of angle and provide the input as CK and now we will be plotting it so for plotting purpose we will be making the use of subplot and for 2 comma 1 comma 1 the first cell we shall be plotting it with the help of stem so here it will be k variable and magnitude of ck can be the input here next to that we can make labeling to it so x label here it will be the k value onto the x axis here then y label so for y label we can write magnitude of the Fourier coefficient ck next to that we can continue for the second cell of the subplot here for this subplot we write 2 comma 1 comma 2 then the stem function here k comma phase of ck and we shall be writing x label k here then y label here we shall be writing phase of ck here so this is the script this we can be saving it with the name program one underscore 22 here dot m will be the file extension and we can execute this program so we run this program and after running this program we come to see the output window here so in this output window what i maximize here we have the magnitude spectrum as well as the space spectrum here on to the command prompt if we go we can see here ck that was initially the null one and it has now the various columns up to column 1 to 12 the various coefficients the real part and the imaginary part we have obtained here so these are the magnitude values those we have plotted and the phase values the angle values we can see here so here the complete expression a lot of number of brackets so for every opening bracket there should be a closing bracket too and this is what the corresponding output we have now generated for the given task here
so i hope that we are now very much familiar with operating the fourier tools onto the signals discrete time or the continuous time signal by the next lecture we shall be using the fourier transformation for performing the convolution here thank you